I, I believe, uh, and I learned very young. From parents? From my parents, absolutely. Yeah. That you, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm going to lay this brick yeah. as perfectly as a brick can be laid. There will not be one brick on the face of the earth that's going to be laid better than this brick that I'm going to lay in this next 10 minutes. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a and wall. Soon you have a wall. Yeah. And I think psychologically, the advantage that, that that gives me over over a lot of people that I have been in competition with in different situations is it's difficult to take the first step when you look how big yeah, exactly. the, the task is. The task is never huge to me. It's always yeah, me one brick. Me too. We're, we're talking about our figurative wall. That, yeah. that, that comes from work on a literal wall. Yeah, right. Uh, my, my father owned, uh, it, was, it actually was an old bakery. When I was growing up, my, yeah, my father was uh, an electrician and a uh, refrigeration man. We would, we would install supermarkets. You see the long freezer cases yeah. in supermarkets. We would install those long freezer yeah. cases and all the lights. That's what, we right. would, that's what we would do every summer. Yeah. So this, uh, this one year, my father had his shop, and he decided for whatever reason that he wanted a new wall on the front of his shop. So he tore down <laughs> probably about uh, you know, 16 feet high and probably about uh, 30 feet long. He just completely tore yeah. the wall down, and my brother and I had to dig a six-foot hole. <laughs> We for the foundation. In, for yeah, the foundation. Right. We would mix in the concrete by hand. Yeah. A year and a half. We were building this wall for a year and a half. Every day after school, we were coming, mixing concrete, putting it in the hole, doing it. And it was just myself and my little brother. And I remember standing back, looking at that wall, saying, there's going to be a hole here forever. <laughs> there will never be anything <laughs> never but a hole here. Right. And a year and a half I don't later, have that many days. I know, <laughs> a year and a half later, we laid the the final brick. Yeah. And my father stood back with my brother and I and I know he planned this. He says he does, he says he didn't, but I know he was, had been planning this yeah. and writing this for his <laughs> <laughs> for for the past 2 years, but he we stood back, we looked at the wall and he looked at me and my brother and said, said "Don't y'all never tell me that you can't do, do something. something and walked into the shop. That was like the first real um, goal like that in terms of setting goals. I was like, I want to be the biggest movie star in the world. Mm. Right. And every, uh, up until that point, everything was like it was fun and it was happening and we were creating in Jeff's mom's basement and yeah. it was mm -hmm. successful. But that was like when I moved into acting, that was the first time I started uh, applying uh, skill to my my talents. Right. And, you know, I always look I look at skill and talent separately. Like Pete, you're born with talent. You know, it's like there's certain things that you just do naturally. You were gifted with a talent and you have it. Um, but skill is acquired through discipline and, you know, I've never seen myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is I'm willing to die in the process of acquiring skill. You know, so for me to be a movie star was the first thing yeah. that I ever really wanted like that and set my He was like right, Schwarzenegger, sort of, Stallone, Bruce Schwartz, Willis. All of them. I was, like, I was like, you know, because when I, when I looked, I always felt like there, there weren't a lot of people I saw do things that I felt like I couldn't do, mm. right? When I, when I look at people and I see things, um, I, don't, I don't feel like I can't. Whether or not I will is something different, but I don't ever feel like I can't. Denzel was the only person that I looked at on screen. I was like, I just can't do that. Right. Like, I, I, you know, he just... He just got a thing that was so extra yeah. that I just felt like I couldn't, I could never, I, I could never live up to that. But yeah. for the most part, when I look at people, when I, when I look at things, um, I always feel like I can. When I look at Jay right now, I see I, I can't do that. When I, I see stuff I can't do, when he, when he writes, um, the, the, the way he writes, the way his mind works, I look at Jay, I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. Um, I looked at Eminem, I was like, I can't, I can't do that. You know, <laughs> like, but for the most part, 
I don't, I don't live in a space of I can't. I live in this space of I, I feel confident that if I put in my 10,000 hours that I can, I can achieve anything. I always knew that I could work hard enough. I didn't, I, there, there wasn't an issue with discipline. I'm not the best at anything. You know what I mean? Eddie Murphy is funnier than I'll ever be. Denzel is more powerful than I'll ever be. I think that, that my strength is I can do everything well, you know? I can do a little bit of everything, and that's what I concentrate on to be my strength. I'll never be able to com compete with Denzel. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love. That when you say that you love yourself, that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving. It's like you say to yourself, hey man, look, I know you wanna eat that pizza and it'll be really good, you know, but I can't let you eat that, man, because if, if you eat that pizza, you're gonna feel like shit, you know, and I, I just, I love you too much to let you eat that. And I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name. We think about it in terms of punishment. I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in that way. I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you, you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. Self-love is when you say to yourself, oh, man, look, I know you and that girl got a real connection. Um, I know y'all vibe, but that's your girl's cousin. So I love you too much to let you do that. Self-love is, hey, look, I know you got a, a, a test on Monday, you know, and I know you really want to go out with your friends. It's Saturday night. You want to go out. But if you fail that test, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know, I just I love you too much to let you go out tonight. Self-discipline is self-love. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself, which means you have to discipline your behavior. The road to sustained happiness is through disciplining your behavior. And where I excel is ridiculous sickening work ethic. You know, while the other guy's sleeping, I'm working. While the other guy's eating, I'm working. Uh, a few months ago, I said that I believe that uh, <laughs> if I chose to, I could be the president of the United States. And I think uh, as I've, I've had a chance to intellectualize why I said that. Yeah. And I think that there's a certain delusional quality that all successful people have to have. You have to believe that something different than what has happened for the last 50 yeah, million yeah, years right. of history. You have to believe that something different can happen. Yeah. That's a huge part of, of, of me. Because, and I say to my friends all the time, and we, we laugh about it, I truly, Honestly, as I sit here before you right now, as honestly as I can say it to you, I truly believe that I could be the president if I wanted to. And as bizarre as that may sound to yeah. people that have traveled the path before me and to people who actually know how yeah. difficult it is, foolish Will Smith honestly believes it's <laughs> sitting here. <laughs>